Well, good evening. Merry, Merry Christmas to you. Happy Christmas Eve. I was joking the other night at rehearsal going, he is born. He is born indeed. Never mind. <laughs> it's wonderful to be with you all this evening, uh, just before it snows. And I'm thankful that we get to worship together around the word of the Lord and around these songs that have been passed down to us from centuries past, uh, some of them old, some of them new, and just remind us so vividly of what it is we celebrate, the coming of our Messiah, the coming of our Savior, as we look from the cradle across to the cross and the empty tomb. And so I hope you'll sing with full voices tonight and you'll listen with open hearts to the word of the Lord as we Alternate reading scriptures from the Old Testament and the New Testament. Alternate those scriptures with singing of carols throughout the whole evening. And so be prepared. There's a lot of participation tonight. So um, there is uh, some, some information that there is a Subaru, uh, a red Subaru with its lights on, 941Q3, I think. I can't read that. But anyway, if that's you, we'll all bow in prayer while you go out and turn your lights off. So... Um, but and one thing that we have done in the past, and we've, we've changed it up a little bit recently, is every Christmas Eve, we have taken an offering for what we call our Benevolent Fund here at the church. And this is a fund that we keep going through the year uh, to help people with rent, with groceries, with uh, utility bills, people who come to the church for help, and also people who are already here in the church uh, who need help. And so Christmas Eve seems like a great time to do that. So we will, is there a box in the back, Richard? For that, okay. But there is, on the desk, on the big counter out in the lobby, there is a slot at the far end. If you just, if you want to write a check for our benevolent fund, 
designate it for that in the memo line and put that in that slot at the end of the counter as you leave tonight. Those funds will 100% go to help those people who are in need. So I uh, ask you to prayerfully consider uh, helping with that. But for now, I want to invite you to stand as we sing in worship to our great God. advent of the Christ was expected in the Old Testament.
For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing it and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. But you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from old, from ancient times. In the time of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed, nor will it be left to another people. It will crush all those kingdoms and bring them to an end, but it will itself endure forever. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots, a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord, and he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he fears with his ears, but with righteousness he will judge the needy, with justice he will give decisions to the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. With the breath of his lips, he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt, and faithfulness the sash around his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb. The leopard will lie down with the goat. The calf and the lion and the yearling together. A little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear. Their young will lie down together. And the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the cobra's den, and the young child will put its hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. In that day, the root of Jesse will stand as a banner for the peoples. The nations will rally to him, and his resting place will be glorious." had it marked, but I'll find it for Sarah because I was the one who turned it down the corner. Thank you so much. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, a king who will reign wisely and do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. This is the name by which he will be called the Lord, our righteous Savior.
beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children not born of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father full of grace and truth. John testified concerning him. He cried out saying, this is the one I spoke about when I said, he who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. Out of his fullness, we have all received grace in place of grace already given. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but the one and only son who is himself God and is in closest relationship with the father has made him known.
the advent of the Christ was foretold in the New Testament. It was foretold to Mary. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. The advent of the Christ was foretold to Joseph. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins.
advent of the Christ was foretold to Zechariah. Filled with the Spirit and prophesying, he declared, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us to show the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy remnant. The oath that he swore to our father Abraham to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people in the forgiveness of their sins. Because of the tender mercy of our God, whereby the sunrise shall visit us from on high, to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. And the advent of the Christ was foretold to the shepherds and to others. And in this same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be to all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and singing, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all, who heard, and all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. 
Would you please stand? Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plains, and the mountains in reply, echoing their joyous strains. Oh, 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 in excelsis day. Song. 
frightened ones fear not, fear not. And when the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And his father and mother marveled at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel and for a sign that is opposed and a sword will pierce through your own soul also, so that thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. Would you stand again? Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King Peace on Joyful all ye nations rise, join the triumph. 
You may be seated. The ultimate purpose of the Christ's birth was revealed. It was announced to Joseph. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. It was declared by Jesus himself. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. If anyone hears my words and does not keep them, I do not judge him. For I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. The ultimate purpose of the Christ's birth was declared by apostles after Jesus' death, resurrection, and ascension into heaven. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his Son, born of woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. Whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil, for the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. Since, therefore, the children share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise partook of the same things, that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is, the devil, and deliver all those who through fear of death were subject to lifelong slavery. For surely it is not angels that he helps, but he helps the offspring of Abraham. Therefore, he had to be made like his brothers in every respect, so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God to make propitiation for the sins of the people.
hope that we have today in the Christ. Christ redeemed us from the curse by the law by becoming a curse for us. It is written, Cursed is everyone who is hanged on a tree, so that in Christ Jesus the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles, so that we might receive the promised spirit through faith. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people, training us to renounce and <clears throat> training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in the present age, waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify for himself a people for his own possession who are zealous for good works being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. For God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ. As we, as we begin this song, let's invite you to reflect on the lyrics as the ladies sing the first verse and we'll join together on the second verse.
Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. When the Allies stormed the beaches of Normandy, France, in the early hours of June 6th, 1944. It was the beginning of the end of World War II in Europe. We just didn't know it yet. A beachhead had been established in Europe that allowed our soldiers to move into the heart of Nazi-occupied Europe and eventually to completely defeat Adolf Hitler's forces. 2,000 years ago on a cold night in Palestine, in the small village of Bethlehem, another beachhead was established. God had invaded history, and the world, occupied by Satan, suddenly had the hope of freedom from the tyranny of sin. However, this time, the invasion was not a political one. It was not a military one. There were no armies of angels brandishing swords with fire, they didn't storm the Mount of Jerusalem. Instead, there was the cry of a small baby held in the arms of a frightened teenage mother next to her loving husband. This news wasn't given to kings. It wasn't given to priests. It wasn't given to the governors, nor to the rich or the influential. It was first given to shepherds. These were the unclean, they were the untrustworthy. They couldn't testify in court because they were notorious liars. 
They were poor, they were social outcasts, they were outcasts both politically and spiritually. Yet these were the first to bear witness to the gospel. The passage that we read earlier tonight, that they actually went forth through the streets of Jerusalem telling the good news that the Messiah had been born. They were the first to preach that good news to those around them. See, God is indeed the God of surprises. Instead of the spiritual elites and the leaders of Israel, the good news went out to the Magi. We sometimes call them the wise men. They were foreigners. They were strangers to the promises of Abraham. Most likely they were pagans. They were astrologers. Yet they traveled for miles to worship this new king at great cost to themselves, both in their gifts and in their journey. They were, in fact, more eager and prepared to worship God than the priestly class in Jerusalem was. See, God went to the outsiders first. He went first to those beneath or beyond our notice. All the religious training and pedigree didn't earn the announcement of Christ's arrival. Those who were simple, untrained, but who knew their need were the first recipients of the gospel, and they responded. The message to the shepherds and to the magi was one of hope. This was Jesus, Yeshua, the Messiah, the anointed one, long promised as the coming king of the Jews. This was hope. For God had come among his people as one of them. He wasn't far off and aloof. He came near. And for the next 33 years, we would see God in action, loving, healing, teaching, caring for us, challenging us, and eventually laying down his rights as king, as God, and dying to pay for my sins. Here was hope. For at Christmas, we do not celebrate the ultimate goal of Jesus coming among us. Now, we save that for Good Friday and for Easter Sunday, right? But at Christmas, we celebrate hope. Hope that is based on the promise given by God himself. Hope that we are seen. That we are understood. And that we are loved. This is hope that does not disappoint. For he who promised is faithful. Someone posted this this morning on a social media account I follow and I had to find it, so I added it and I'm going to read it to you tonight. And unfortunately, in my screen grab, I did not grab the writer of this poem. Come and ask me later if you want to know. It's called O Emmanuel. By the way, Emmanuel, the word means God with us. O come, O come, and be our God with us. O long sought witness for a world without. O secret seed, O hidden spring of light, come to us wisdom, come unspoken name, come root and key and king and holy flame. O quickened little wick, so tightly curled, be folded with us into time and space. Unfold for us the mystery of grace and make a womb of all this wounded world. O heart of heaven beating in the earth, O tiny hope within our hopelessness, come to be born to bear us to our birth, to touch a dying world with new made hands and make these rags of time our swaddling bands. Come celebrate the hope of Christmas with us. Celebrate the gift that does not fade or fail us. Joy to the world, for the Lord has indeed come. Would you stand one more time?
Thank you tonight, for you have come and rescued us. And so we sing, hallelujah, gloria in excelsis Deo, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace and goodwill to those on whom his favor rests. Thank you for showing us your great favor, your great love tonight. Make us your own, make your home in our hearts today, Lord. We love you and we thank you. And we look forward as we continue to worship, as we look across the manger to the cross and that empty tomb, that we may not fear death anymore. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And all we, God's people said, amen. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Go in the grace and peace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Love one another well as you go. We love you, and uh, we'll see you Sunday, but Happy New Year if we don't see you. Amen.